another beautiful Saturday afternoon and you're welcome to the program Editors Forum exclusive to Galaxy Television. I am Marita Omodia and on this program we get to discuss front burners and of course issues affecting the polity and of course it's a week to the Ocean State gubernatorial elections. A lot of things have been put ahead of that particular election as against the 2019 election. A lot of people are looking up to it to see how fruitful it will be as against the 2019 general elections. And of course, I will not be alone today. I have distinguished gentlemen and our miss who will be giving us their unbiased analysis on issues as they come by on the program today. We have Emeka Madunagu and Brucey Bouquet and of course Otumba Gwinga Onoiga on the show. You're welcome to the show, gentlemen. My pleasure. Yeah, good afternoon. I, I was uh, I was I started to be you. careful because I know you prefer the Otumba Gwinga. Not really. You don't I prefer, prefer that? I'm a broadcaster. So you prefer the Gwinga? <laughs> when I get to the village, no problem, Otumba. Okay, where you are the, yeah. where you are the traditional council. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you must see at least give me that uh, as a broadcaster, we don't You're okay with me, guys. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for joining us on the show. And today we will start with the controversies now surrounding President Muhammad Buhari's appointees. And of course, as we well know, the Minister of Finance, the former Minister of Finance, Kemi Adio Shun, resigned. Yes, we heard the news yesterday that she has resigned from a position following allegations of um, uh, NYC, that's National Youth Service Corps, in which she fought our certificate and, of course, our exemption certificate in lieu with that. A lot of controversies went on with that as on July 7th this year, the report of the minister fought in the mandatory National Youth Service Corps and exemption certificate in lieu. A lot of people were against it and they expected her to resign from her position. And just yesterday, would we say she did what most people were expecting and she resigned from her position. So we'll start with that today. Emeka, how would you react to this particular development? Would you say she actually made the right move? Was it wrong? Was it a little bit too slow? Or this came at the right time for her? Yeah. Good afternoon, viewers. Um, I would say it was a little too late in coming um, because when the controversy broke, um, there were attempts to pussyfoot around, you know, to dodge the issues and make um, those who raised the issues, the, med the, the, the medium, the online medium that raised the issue, to look like they were just um, scaremongering. Um, but the matter was kept on the front burner by Nigerians who, thank God for social media, have become more enlightened and more... Um, you know, they, use, they, they know how to use their rights. They are more expressive, you know. And so, as things went on, you know, of course, I felt it was damaging for somebody in such a position, position of the Minister of Finances. In any country, it's um, a very sensitive position. It's a position that um, any wrong move made by the minister, or any wrong pronouncement made by the minister, can actually affect the stock market, can affect a lot of things, can shake investor conf investors, you know, the confidence of investors, can rock the economy. So whoever holds that position, just like the uh, occupant of the office of the governor of the central bank of any country, must be like Caesar's wife, must be seen to be above board. You know? So fortunately, the matter was left to drag, NYC, was dancing left and right, but I think now that she has decided to resign, it says a lot about the um, way the Buhari administration is being wrong. Without apologies, I think this administration has shown blatant disregard for the feelings of Nigerians on many sensitive issues. You know, when issues come up, they try to vilify those who raise the issues. These are engaging issues, they engage people. And then their supporters you know, try to throw a lot of vitriol at people. I think we should be more civilized in our engagement. In, in engagement, we should, more, we should more civilize. We should deal more with issues than attacking individuals. And so, now she has resigned. She has left the place. But what does it say again? One important point, that President Buhari didn't know many of the, of the people he appointed into his government. And people have been saying it all over. And it has shown this is not the first um, case. Uh, that, you know, where, where people raise issues about, 
you know, one of um, Buhari's appointees, and where he failed to do nothing. He did nothing, just kept, he just sat down and folded his arms and thought maybe it would go away. Thank God this didn't go away. I, I give kudos to Nigerians for insisting that the right thing would be done. Okay, how would you react to that, Ambrose, concerning, I mean, this is a ministerial appointee, and let's look at the reasons now. She is supposed to, there's supposed to have been a lot of procedures before appointing the minister, and yet we're having a minister who forged a certificate. What would you say on the part of the president in this? Well, I'll first of all start with the fact that uh, uh, let this be a continuous uh, lesson that everybody uh, should learn um, when you're supposed to do the right thing and you don't do it, especially, I'm talking more to younger people, um, you should do the right thing when you're supposed to do it. Even when some people think you should cut corners, you should insist on doing the right thing. Um, Twenty-something years later, something she did as a young woman is coming to hurt her in the epoch of her career because she didn't do it right. And when she was supposed to do it, some people somewhere would have told her, oh, you need to serve, you should just get exemption later, it doesn't matter. And then they went to procure one for her. Probably the people she gave that to were people she had so much confidence in and trust in. And they went to procure uh, Olu Olu certificate for her. What to call Olu Olu? Olu Olu. Olu Olu certificate in Lagos Island. And then uh, she presented that. Now, there was a question we raised. During the screening by the Senate, the ones were there screening. Because the DSS was supposed to have been involved and all the paraphernalia of the intelligence community was supposed to be involved in the screening. And this set all the documents, forensic uh, processes were done to screen those things. And th the question is, was it discovered that her certificate was forged? Was it also even discovered that in the first place, Mrs. Ado, she was not supposed to have an exemption certificate because she was within the age of the, core, of the youth service call when she graduated. So she was, no matter how many years it took her to come back, she would have come back as still served. Because by the time she became a graduate, she was under 30. She was not 30 years old yet. Therefore, this serves as a lesson. It will always come to hurt you later. Then secondly, when this broke, it was broken by a premium times, an online newspaper. When it happened, as Emeka has rightly said, there was a lot of vilification. Uh, the pro Buharis seemed to have a, what are called slavish followership. This was slavish. Because when you can no longer, uh, Bob Marley said in his music, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, what, if mental slavery is being very, very prominent here, where Buhari does no wrong, sees no wrong, and acts no wrong. Therefore, if we, are, if we are a lover of your leader, when your leader does wrong, you should be able to point out in a respectful manner that you have done wrong here. And we should take it up. But what we have seen over the last three years is that Nothing can go wrong with the, pre uh, the presidency so far. Buhari is in charge. And things have been going wrong. And when this came up, we had surprising statements from people like uh, Professor Isesagi. Who is a. Ridiculous. Before now, he revered, he no more revered, by the way, because he has uh, the, the no, utterances no. that he no, makes. No, no, no. Um, I wonder what young lawyers, what, you are what he's teaching the long, uh, young lawyers. Because how can a professor of law say that it doesn't matter, it is about the service she's running to the country? These are the kind of blind followership we're talking about. Then the other issue, people like, um, uh, other people were writing that it doesn't matter if she's, she's contributing positively. That is not the point. It's not the point. The point is that she has done wrong and she has to go. And then, I think some people, bootlickers were also telling her, stay, no, stay oh, nothing will happen, nothing will happen. A UK trained person like her, who later worked in Goldman Sachs and some other, before coming back to Nigeria, supposed to know the word integrity. And she was supposed to just write in, put in the uh, throw in the towel and go. But I know the backers on were telling her, stay John, nothing will happen, nothing will happen. We are behind you, this and that, that kind of mentality. And she stayed on, stayed on. When it became too much, I'm sure that even her trainers and people in the school she went, but that maybe he told her, look, are you representing the certificate we get to give to you? The certification she got from across in her professional career, all the certifications she got, I mean, at a point, this, if it's a serious institute, especially when they do one's brain in the uh, UK, I'm sure she's a Brentwood trained person. Uh, they will try to, you know, to withdraw it. If she, I think some of those pressures caved in. But if it's left for our politicians, say no wrong, do no wrong. So I think she caved in more to international pressure. I think the right thing for her to do, what I expected her to do then, 
that would have made Nigeria uh, you know, very happy with that, to have resigned immediately, apply to the, US, uh, to the NYSC, go back to the orientation camp in the last batch stream, in that next batch stream that she was supposed to do, and start her youth service. And then she will ask Nigeria, let redeploy me to the to the Ministry of Finance. Let me continue my work. And let her be coming with her khaki on, on her on her on her day, on her CD days. And then Nigeria would have clapped for her then. Because that would be leading by example. But now it's come, as America said, it's, it's coming too late. But it serves as a lesson for Nigerians. One, that when we insist, something happens. This is the first time in a very long while, I can't remember in recent history, I mean for 1999 yeah. now that a minister resigned because of an outcry from the people for a wrong year. I remember the Professor Boris Yadier when he was minister for aviation. When I told him, well, won't you resign because of air crashes happening everywhere? He said, oh, my God, <laughs> am I the one who makes air crash to cry? I mean, how can a minister be talking about for the first time? All the ministers that have resigned in the past were for political reasons, you know, to contest elections. And, but for the first time, this is that, that Nigeria said, you're supposed to resign. So we should keep up this pressure. And keep it up. This is the second one that has happened. The last one has happened. Um, even though it took a lot of time for Bachelor last one to happen, it happened. All these things are happening because of the outcry of the people. We should keep this campaign on. That means we can make anything happen in this country if we insist. We did it in June 12th. We keep doing it. And if we put pressure on the government, they will continue to listen to us. Okay, do you have any other sides to this story? Yeah, I'll try to be as brief as possible, but I'm approaching the whole thing from a different perspective. Okay. So that I sit back and I see, I wonder the way we give judgment as Nigerians, and it baffles me. And it reminds me of the biblical story where Jesus Christ challenged, you know, that told you for school. And I'm challenging many of us who are busy you know, blaming on your shoe, you have done this, you have done that, to, to search, to go back to their files and check certain documents. But I don't need to go far. Because I was involved in one. We went for a training as uh, to be, uh, what do you call it, this road safety special yeah, okay. And the first thing they asked us, please, can you bring your yeah, driver's yeah. license? And out of 10 of us, eight of us had fake driver's license. <laughs> out of the eight, five of us got our driver's license from uh, the VIO the, the, the normal place. We, they went, went there and we issued fake driver's license. Wow. Mm. I can, I'm, I'm saying it on, on I mean, uh, I mean, categorically because I was involved. We did not know. We did not know. Apparently, I'm convinced that Kemi Adiosho did not know that this would happen. I hope we even took time to read. Uh, a letter of resignation. Oh, it's very explicit. She was born out there, and she didn't come back uh, to get. She got a Nigerian uh, 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 passport like, when she was 34 already, and uh, she approached some people and said, "No problem." You've, they misinformed her, exactly. and she relaxed. They got nothing for her. We talk as if she did it deliberately. We never can no, tell. No, 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 that's, that's we never what, can tell. Right from time, eh? right it's from only time, the court that can right determine. That somebody procured it, and that's when I was making yes. my statement. Yeah. The people she trusted were the, basically the people that went together. Uh, oh, okay, to the how many of us? How many of us bothered to go to a, a licensing office to sit for capture for, for driver's license? I did. I did. Very few. It took, me, it took me almost a year. Yes, almost a year to get my license. Well, so like, wait for one year. Like, one year. That's what I'm just telling you. Okay, we should papers. No, the lessons. Like the <laughs> lessons. So, uh, if I get it straight, if I didn't say that what she did was right now, or we shouldn't blame her. No, what she did not know what happened was unfortunate. You know. Yes. Really, I'm talking about the lessons from what happened to Adioshu. Mm -hmm. We okay. should learn a lesson for it yeah. to be more thorough, to to take the pain oh, to sure. do the right thing. Sure. I support what uh, that, That's just a lesson. And again, all of us should go back home and even search our certificates. <laughs> you know, it's true. Okay. Well, true. Because if you can get the fake thing from even it's what you true. think is the right source. <laughs> so that's, that's, I just cited my own example now. For two, three years, I did not know that I was holding a fake driver's license. Oh. Meanwhile, I got it from a licensing office. I didn't know some of the touts there did it. Number one, they asked me that, okay, I was in Abuja then. Uh, what was going to do was in Nasarawa State. I asked the guy, he said, I know, they didn't have a booklet there, they had to go to so so and so place. That was for number one indication, uh, indicator. The second one, according to road safety people, was that did I come for capture? I asked, and the guy told me, okay, don't worry, just bring your passport, uh, pass, uh, passport. passport photograph. I did not know 
until I did I was corrected. So we should be very careful. You know, this same offense cost me 20,000 in Lagos when VIO arrested me. I had to pay 20,000 for this same offense of. Uh, so well, that's well, why well, it well, Now, not only the individuals are involved now, but those in charge of um, or, um, giving certificates now, are we going to blame them now for a particular no, issue? No, the, the point is that the system yeah. is not yeah, thorough. That is it. The system. Because, okay, it's, it appears, I don't know whether it's influenced by this addition issue. But recently, um, many MDAs embarked on verification, on verification of even marriage certificates, birth certificates, all kinds of certificates. MDAs, they just, they just did it. A rector of the Polytechnic <coughs> yes. claimed to have rector. He was so reckless in Marshall State. He was so bold enough to say, even have a PhD from me, bad or that is a name. Uh, that's just next door. That, that's next door. Only to find out that it was fake. It was not yeah, that was the, the system. Uh, the system. No, I, I think I'm like, that's everybody's talking example. about the system the, right now. The yeah. system. The next you know, I, I, I don't want to. Yes, I said President Buhari didn't know many of the appointments. That is wrong. No, no. What I'm talking about. No, what I'm talking about is. What of Augustine? What I'm talking about. What of National Assembly? What of. No, I'm talking about. No, no, no. I should serve as commission. What I'm talking about. Yes, in Augustine. I don't know that. Can I say something? Let's still hold on to the maker. Can I say something? No, you see, why I said. I, I, you know, there was a time when President Jonathan, you know, asked his ministers to sign certain papers, you know, talking, you know, trying to hold them up to certain high standards of morality. I felt when, when I said President Boyd didn't know many of the, of the parties, he's not God. But what I expect is this: for the fact that many of these people are going to be uh, uh, introduced to you, and I think this should be a lesson for people at different levels. You need to get them to sign at least a paper, code of conduct, that if any so-so-so and so is found against you and is proved, not only will you, be, will you be expected to resign, but you'll be prosecuted. That is one. And then two, the National Assembly. National Assembly should be more thorough. I'll take a bow. Should be more thorough. All this take a bow, all the party affair, family affair, these things are embarrassing Nigerians. You see, this may be Adele Shun. She may say, okay, somebody got it for her and all of that. But let me tell you something. Imagine if it was a fake international passport and she was stopped at an airport, maybe in the US the or Europe, and maybe somebody, maybe one junior immigration officer said, oh, can I have a look at your passport? And found out it was fake. Would you be telling them somebody got it for you and all that? So, like Otumba said, yes, let us be more thorough individually. But again, the system should check a lot of things. Because I've seen a situation where a teacher he tried to get a job in a missionary school. And the proprietor just said, let's you know, verify his certificate. And it happened that he was trying to present a certificate of a dead person, somebody who had died. And so a lot of these things go on. But we need to make the system work. Then the National Assembly and the DSS. Mm -hmm. The DSS needs to be insulated from all this politics. There's a lot going on. A lot of forgeries, a lot of racketeering. It's going on as we speak. So the security agencies, not just the DSS, the police, they must screen, they must check these things. The National Assembly, oh, the parties, National the Assembly, political the, the political parties. No, but you see, the, the unfortunate thing about the political parties is this issue of godfatherism. People are just brought in and anything, anything goes. But appointees themselves, if you're going to go into public office, mm -hmm. you are like goldfish. You have no hiding place. People are going to scrutinize everything about you. And God help you, there is something in one corner, you're in trouble. So it's better you just even recuse yourself. So your private life, even if people accuse you of anything, you can quietly go and correct it. But the minute you step into public office, I'm sorry. And then one you more are... thing. Okay. <laughs> um, when, as we said, there are systems. Where Mrs. Adoshon would have aired was not, as Sir Tumba said, not going through the, uh, no, reading thoroughly the guidelines for the youth service mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Yeah. Because you are supposed, when you have graduated before 30, the law says you should serve this country for one year, one year. In, the, in a core program. Now, she finished. Even if she came to the country at the age of 40, 50, it doesn't matter. She should have said, go through the books and said, no, I'm not supposed to even get an exemption letter. I'm supposed to actually serve. And then she could serve one year. It could be in her place of work. She could serve one year, and then that is it. But she didn't do that. So uh, making some people convince you to do the wrong thing, 
or maybe some people, it's not an excuse. And that's, that's why those people, where are they? They have all played the ostrich, they have all run away. Yeah. She's left to bear the brunt. So it's a good example. Uh -huh. Second one uh -huh. is this. The Nigerian media have come of age. Yeah. We thought all hope was lost, but with this action, but we can see that there's hope for the Nigerian media. Therefore, we should dig more. We should investigate more. And we find out that the online media are the people who are the forefront of this investigation. Yes. Most of the time. Therefore, it's a challenge to the traditional media that we should come out from a cuckoo. We should stop this event reporting we do every day. And press statement, press. We, we reel out every day. We don't investigate anything. People just give us press release, send it to our email boxes. Sometimes we don't even edit, we carry it as news and slam it. With the same thing you read in one newspaper, you, say, you are reading in this other one, the same thing. I say, where is the creativity gone? Therefore, the media houses should retrain because there are a lot of people who are in the media practice who are not even schooled in any communication art. They didn't go to any school of journalism, nothing. So they don't even know the codes, and yet they don't have in house trainings. Therefore, we must wake up, do more investigation, dig up things so that our political leaders can be accountable to us. Okay, well, was he talking about um, controversies surrounding Buhari's appointment? Even though this has actually created a bad light on uh, Buhari's administration, we do realize, if you remember Lawal Dara, that's the former DSS DG who was asked to vacate his position as regards to the invasion of the National Assembly. Well, there was an acting DSS DG, which was Matthew Safer from Biosa State. But recently, President Muhammad Buhari has appointed a new DSS DG, that's the Department of State Services and Director General, as Yusuf Bichi. A lot of controversies are going around this um, appointment, saying they should have practically left Matthew Safer to continue. And why does it actually have to be from the North? That's the new DSS DG now, Yusuf Bichi, is from the North. A lot of people have said that they should have left it with the Bielsa and not everything being zoned to North North. And there are also controversies also that he has actually retired from service. That means he has actually worked for 35 years and he has retired. And now they're reappointing him as the DSS DG. What do you say to this, Benga? Well, um, we have been getting reactions to the appointment. Uh, definitely many people are not happy about it, but why must the appointment come from a particular part of the country? Why not leave uh, the Bielsa man to, to, to continue? We are seen as uh, I'm having a uh, sort of richer um, uh, uh, CV yeah. and a thorough um, security operative. Uh, it's a big problem, it's a big body. Yes, the Information minister responded yesterday that uh, why are Nigerians uh, focusing on only the uh, security sector, that they should look at other sectors where uh, there seem to be more balance and uh, in fact it was insinuating that uh, there are more appointees from other parts of the country rather than the, say the north holding some key positions in parastatals in uh, so many of these uh, government uh, agencies. But the truth of it is that uh, many Nigerians are not comfortable about this particular appointment. That why, why again from the north? Why must the security apparatus be dominated by people from a particular part of the country? That is a question. Okay, let's hear from you, Ambrose. Do you actually agree with this? A lot of people, the allegations that the president is actually being ethno biased, that's actually giving an appointment to the north. Would you agree with that? Well, there was there's a political uh, language called nepotism. Uh, nepotism, uh, we used to hear it in the government uh, parlance, but yeah. this can be explained uh, very strongly in Nigeria. In fact, because of nepotism, uh, there was a commission in Nigeria that was called, called the Federal Character Commission. Yeah. Uh, not even in the time of the military was there so much nepotism as we have it now. Because the security positions, uh, you can give other political positions, Minister for Health, Transport, if I do not. But I think about the security of life, and we know that. Nigeria is structured across ethnic and religious lines, and everybody is very careful about what. So there was always this delicate art of balancing, when, even from the, when the military were there, that when the top man is from the north, they want to get a second man from the, if this man is chief of army staff from the south, they want to balance something from the uh, north central. You know, there was that delicate balancing art, especially from 1999 to, uh, till 2015. And um, why that federal character was formed? Now, 
the same presidency that is saying it doesn't matter, it's marriage, it's the same presidency that when you go to the admissions into the university or unity schools, and the same people say somebody who scored five percent from the north. Two. Uh, Your base two. Uh -uh. And somebody oh, well, sure. yes. Your and somebody must score so, so and so forth because they want to yes. have a balancing act. They don't want one side to dominate. You are the same people who are coming back to do now. Let me read out some. The chief of S F uh, S staff is from the north. The IG of police is from the north. The DG of DSS is from the north. The chief of naval staff is from the north. Chief of army staff, the national security advisor is from the north. The immigration chief is from the north. Civil defense is from the north. And then they will have the also the ministers for the prison uh, the prison uh, uh, yes control, uh, control, control general. General, yes. that of the custom is also the chief minister for defense is from the north no the chief of national staff is from the south south but the chief of defense okay. intelligence chief of defense so intelligence we are talking about yes. uh, almost ninety percent of the positions in yeah. the security architecture of Nigeria mm. is handled by. And so somebody, there was a joke somebody said one time that if they go for the meeting, do they speak English? <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> like a town hall meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it, it's now, that is, it, this kind of actions and indifference, because it's, it's indifferent, because they say, okay, you have done this, 2015. People are now expecting, okay, since the DSS man has, uh, was asked to resign, okay, you now start doing a kind of delicate balancing. Nothing. You still went and appointed somebody from the corner to replace somebody else from the corner. Therefore, that means the president is indifferent to whatever uh, yearnings of Nigeria concerning this. Then the fears, because it is this kind of action that make embolden people like Ipo, embolden yeah. some of these sectarian people to start saying, "We told you so." But if the president was, you know, you know, have this uh, uh, force out of listening to people and doing a balancing, if people. Well, militant groups or some other people raise their ugly heads or something. They say, no, no, but look, this is balance. But when you put all the security architecture in one, and some people have explained, some school of thought has said, why has the uh, Polani headsman uh, issue going on for a long time? Okay. Is it, some people are, are asking, is it a sympathetic action towards some people? If it has happened, is Operation Python that is going on in the East and you are crushing people who are not carrying guns? What has happened to the to the people who are killing people over there? So, uh, this is cannot be wished away, and we cannot all keep quiet about it. Therefore, the Senate should not should do so not to confirm this person, but to correct it because it is wrong, and we cannot all fold our hands and keep looking at this thing happening. Nepotism anywhere is not encouraged, not even in your own private sector workplace. Talk less of in government of a multifaceted religious and ethnic group uh, entity like Nigeria. The president should do uh, the needful and try to reverse this appointment so that other parts of the country can feel that they belong to this country too. Okay, Mika, do you agree with um, Ambrose? Yeah, well, I'm not surprised that this is happening. If you go back to when Buhari was head of state, the time the Armed Forces ruling council was dominated just by Muslims. Go back into history. I'm a historian. Go back into history. So if somebody continues to exhibit this blatant disregard for the wishes of Nigerians, as if Nigerians don't matter. They get to a point, you say, okay, continue. One day, all this will pass. And we hope we'll get better governance. Because the question to ask is that, okay, if you, okay, if he feels that all the appointees should come from the North in his own wisdom, why do we still have insecurity? Why has the country not be all over the country? Why has the country not become more secure? Why has the country not become more secure? Then it shows that that strategy is not working. You saw what um, Donald Trump went went through with his um, appointees. You see the problem. You know, you just pick people and throw in there, and at the end of the day, the same people run you under the bus, which is what is going on right now. You know, uh, of course, are we going to talk about the rift between two service chiefs? that lasted for some time and was said to have contributed significantly to the advance of Boko Haram. Is it a lie that two service chiefs are having a rift and affected um, operations? Is it a lie that headsmen have been running all over the place and nobody is checking them? Is it a lie that insecurity, that the nation is witnessing such serious, such serious state of insecurity that baffles everybody? What is going on? And then the Minister of Information can come out to say, oh, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> After all, uh, why are they focusing on the security sector? Let me tell you, during elections, 
Who handles movement of logistics? Movement of personnel? Who, who handles the security around polling stations and the outer perimeter of polling stations? When the police <coughs> tell you they are going to deploy thousands of people, who is doing the deployment? In whose favor? Against whom? These are the questions Nigerians are asking. Nigerians are not talking about the color of the skin of people, but they are talking about the orientation. Given the history, people are talking about marginalization. A very sensitive sector like security, you insist on bringing people from your own part of the country. We're not telling you, I'm not telling you come and appoint me. I'm not telling you come and appoint people from my family. But what we are saying is that in a country of 180 million people, and then, People in the security sector have to come from a particular part of the country. And we've seen certain things that show that these things are not in the interest of Nigerians. For how long are we going to continue like this? So I'm not surprised because there's a precedent. But what I do know is that how Nigerians will continue to agitate for something better because we're not getting a good deal under this government. All right, now we've talked about the controversy surrounding Buhari's appointees. We've talked about the former finance minister, Kemi Adeoshin, but now there's still a critical issue at stake, and that is the Oshun gubernatorial elections, which will be coming up next week, Saturday. And a lot of preparations are going on for the election. And as you know, a lot of Nigerians are looking up to that election. We looked up to AKT, and there, there were a lot of, there were quite some irregularities that went on, both by and a lot of, and all the electoral practices. Nigerians are hoping that the Ocean State governorship election will be far much better than AKT, and of course, will bring a green light for the 2019 general elections. And recently, the authorities of the Nigerian police have deployed over 36,000 police officers for this election. So let's take a look at this report. And when we come back, we'll take analysis for the Ocean Guba polls. Authorities of the Nigeria police have deployed over 36,000 police officers for the September 22nd governorship election in Ocean State, with a warning to unauthorized individuals or groups to stay away from the state. The Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 11, Danjuma Muhammad Ibrahim, who disclosed this in the Badon during a visit to Governor Abiola Jumobi, stated that all the entry points to Oshun will be blocked against miscreants and unauthorized individuals. He appealed to Governor Jumobi to warn residents of the state that have no business in Oshun State during the period of the elections to stay away in their own interest. Warn the people around here that they likely swift or sneak into ocean and cause problem. We've decided I met the GOC and I called on all my commissioners, including him, to spot. The mobile men who have been supported from Abuja. We have over 36,000 men that are actually getting 40,000 men approximately that are coming for that election. We will seal the exit and entry point just because we don't want to have any problem. We will charge the polity so that anybody that is actually having a concept of creating problem will think twice. But that is not to say we are working. In all honesty, I have been in Ocean. It is a very peaceful environment. There are peace-loving people. But we don't want to fold our arms and say that is it. We'll be surprised and we'll Governor Biola Jumobi lauded the doggedness and resilience of the Assistant Inspector General of Police, stressing that he has no doubt that he would succeed in the new assignment. He assured the AIG of the support of Oyo State Government towards the success of September 22nd governorship election in Ocean State, noting that he has no doubt that all Progressive Congress will emerge victorious in the election. The forthcoming election, but as AIG coming here for me is is what I consider to be a welcome development, bringing a very versatile, competent, professional, effective, and efficient police officer to this state and to cover or show and the environment for this 
forthcoming exercise. Therefore, on behalf of the people and the government of Oyo State, we assure you of our unflinching support to make sure that you succeed in this exercise. Welcome back. You're still on to Editors Forum on Galaxy Television. And as I saw there, you saw the Oyo State Governor, Viola Jumobi, and he was restating the um, um, assurance that he would assist in the Ocean State Governorship election towards the September election, noting that there's no doubt that the All Progressive Congress, I think there he was saying that the APC would emerge victorious in that particular election. But so far, so good. We've had 36,000 officers deployed for the Ocean Governorship election. 48 parties are to contest in that particular election. Uh, according to the INEC um, reports there, we had about 460,000 PVC still uncollected uh, for the Ocean State Governorship election. So far, so good. Let me start with Ambrose. Are we prepared, or rather, is Ocean State prepared for this election? Do you think that stakeholders have done everything appropriate for this election, or do you see a repeat of what happened in Kitty coming back again in Ocean State? Well, I think we, we, we should learn from uh, whatever has happened in the past. So, Ekiti, some lessons that have been learned. I hear that uh, INEC will no longer allow, uh, you know, one of the things that influence the vote buying was when people uh, drop their vote, they raise it up as if they are checking for that, but then the agents at the back get it or they take the, uh, their uh, cell phone, take a picture of what they are doing, and then go out and collect their money. So, that will not be allowed according to INEC. So, uh, that will help to cut out the uh, issue of vote buying. Um, 36,000 police officers. Is it a war? I don't know. We're why, trying to fight. Why do we mind. like physical security? Uh, I mean, the world has gone beyond physical security. The world is now what we call the virtual security, intelligence gathering. But now we still do, you know, we hear our military high command a show of force, Operation Fight or Dam, Operation Croco 19. Why are we still stuck in the past? For a mere election of one state, you are deploying 36,000. How many policemen are left to guide the many of us? <laughs> <laughs> when you now talk of the um, of your state governor, is he an INEC officer? He's a Why is he see. talking about blocking the road on in, in on your is it okay, he wants to block the whole road so that you don't access Russian State? Or he wants to block I don't understand these are politicians, how they talk. And some of sometimes when you check the antecedents of those people, when they were in the private sector, they were brilliant minds. When you get into Nigerian politics, is this something, is there an injection they give to you that, you know, start changing you automatically? Because these are brilliant minds, people like Amosun, people like uh, Adimo. When they were in the private sector, they were they, you know, solid minds. But when they got to politics, you saw him with students, talking to students, bantering them. It was it the uh, demolition, all kinds of controversies. And now you say you want to block a road because the next state is doing an election. I, I mean, these are the, I think some of them just get power drunk when they get there and they become thin gods and talk to us anyhow. And because the Nigerian citizens most of the time are docile, uh, anything goes for them. And that's why a governor can tell his citizens or for you that doesn't have anything to do with governorship election that he was going to block the roads. A governor. And his people are there. They won't do anything. Why should we even block roads during election in this country? What is wrong with us? What is wrong with our processes? But during election, I mean, in a civilized country, when you do an election, people go about their normal duties, you go vote, because the system has been put in place to, you know, to try to make the process transparent and credible. But here, we block roads, we say there's no movement, we lose a lot of money through the economy. Some people will die as a result because there are emergency cases and there are no vehicles to con con convey them. Hospitals will be shut down. All kinds of things will happen because election wants to be conducted in a particular day. And these things are not even that they, they start from like 6 p.m. the previous day to the next day. And then sometimes they even include the vote counting. What is wrong with us? I think we should start changing because this is 2018. Okay, Mika, let's hear from you on this uh, issue. Well, it's um, rather unfortunate that we continue to make elections look like, um, you know, we're going to fight a war. In other countries, they do elections, they conduct elections seamlessly. It's as if 
Nothing is, you know, it's as if nothing out of the ordinary is going on. We need to upgrade our electoral system. I keep saying this, we are still stuck in the past. We are we're still very basic about a lot of things we do in the public space and it doesn't speak well of us, you know, in the global space. And then the issue of the other state governor, it's very wrong. I must say it categorically. He has no business with the election. That comment he made, he needs to apologize to Nigerians for that comment. He has, does he control federal roads? What right does he have to talk about elections in another state? The people of Oshun State have the responsibility to work with INEC and security agents to make the election successful. But it's not the business of another governor to be making comments about security arrangements. Now, these are the things we're talking about. During a kitty election, we learned, we, there were reports that certain governors spent the night in some places in a kitty state. What were they doing there? We remember the case of Erufai when P2B ensured that Erufai was detained, was kept, was restricted to his hotel. And he asked him, Erufai, you are from Kaduna State, what are you doing in Anambra doing, the, doing a governorship election? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? You're not an election observer, nothing. So, when a governor begins to talk like this, then it sends very, it, you know, that means there is danger ahead. It's in your head. And Nigerians must resist things like this. I don't even know why the police went to see. Is it that the police cannot secure the road between or the roads between Oyo and Oshun? But they have to go and get the governor. I don't understand. I don't understand. Okay, let's talk about the preparedness of INEC to curb vote buy-in. Do you think they've actually done well being here? Uh, yeah, I think they've learned some lessons from the AKT election. Um, we, I mean, the, the, the National Commission in charge of uh, publicity, uh, uh, political education, uh, has always been in the news, trying to explain uh, some of the innovations, some of the measures they are taking to avoid the repeat of some of the you know, civil lapses in the conduct of uh, the AKT uh, governorship uh, election, like uh, vote buying, you know. Is there some steps that are going to take this time around that people will not do? I mean, so blatant with uh, the, 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 this issue of uh, vote by you. You vote like he explained, mm -hmm. you show the man behind, you know, or you vote with your hands and take a picture of it. So we hope that uh, they will succeed and they need the cooperation of uh, people of uh, or should to make yeah. sure that people vote according to their conscience. Uh, some of us don't really care which a party wins, but let the most popular party win that election. Let the people be elected, let them not be taken for a right. right. Yes. Let their vote yes. count yes. for goodness yes. sake. Yes. And this involves all of us, even the observers, or even the monitors, because we know the role some of us play in all these things too. There are some people who claim to be observers, you know, they are agents of uh, political the parties, party. they have yeah. interests here and there. Hmm. It's the future of our democracy. It's our future. Yeah, it's not only yeah. yes. in the INEC or police or whatever. You know, we are all guilty of some of these things. We have friends, in-laws, brothers in Oshun. We can experiment with the forthcoming election in Oshun and make sure it's a success. So that, I mean, that will give us all of our assurance that yes, next year's uh, uh, general yes. election will at least it'd be, it'd be better, and it ought to be better. Why should we wait for e, uh, EU and some of these uh, yeah, other bodies. Uh, bodies or countries to start teaching us democracy? I mean, you know when elections started, as well as 2023 or so, yes. we had the first round of elections in this country. This country so when yes. I hear about this nonsense, nonsense, that's why we should delete no, 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 even no, from yeah. 1999 to date. Yes. I mean, it's quite some time. We're supposed to have gone beyond the this. Game. So we must talk to ourselves that let our vote count. Let's make sure that a few people don't uh, push us around. Let people go and collect their PVC. And so much campaign now, more than, I've been covering elections since 1983 in this country. And I've never seen the kind of um, um, publicity please, you know, the, 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 the sensitization going on as regards the collection of PVC. But you'll be amazed that we still have 
millions of physicists stuck in a, in a, an eco so What could be the reason of this? This one collected PVCs. Nonchalance. And they will, uh, what do they do? Wait, like today, what will change? I like citing practical examples. Very early this morning, my area community, I mean, my area in Uriokuta and Uriokudu, we try to mobilize our people to go. Uh, sensitize them so that we can do our road. Mm -hmm. It's so bad, and mm -hmm. government seems to be non challenged. We, we can't wait for government. Our vehicles are down. Anyway, as we're going, we had a public address system and everything. So people were even laughing at us. So we were, even, they almost even at some, we were so angry. They thought we were politicians. Yeah. They said, thought we were campaigning. They said, I want to do the same thing. They are coming back again. These are not educated. I know, I bet. This has nothing to do with government. That is it. <laughs> you see, so we must carry people along. One was even, uh, how much do we have for us? How much are you, uh, you know? People, so we need see aggressive political education to know that they must get involved and make sure that their votes also count. Mm -hmm. All those 3,000, 5,000, uh, whatever, you have, it's your future, you are buying. You know, vote and you are selling. Mm -hmm. So that is just my own. Uh, yes, those in charge, we know there are some lapses here and there, but we, you and I, are we sure that on that day we are going to vote? Are we sure we have our peace leases? As we, are, as we are talking, or those who are very active on the social media, blowing grammar, when it comes to election proper, they are nowhere to be found. They are in their houses. And we keep blaming government. We keep uh, having uh, the idea of truth of this world and everything. <laughs> what lessons have we learned from, uh, me have learned a lot of lessons from this uh, I I'm not really, it's unfortunate what I'm It's very, very unfortunate. It's one of the finest yes. brains you can yes. ever find. Yes, in this country. Yes. yes. Born and brought up there, one the very highly respected uh, 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 organizations mm -hmm. about there and, and here. But see what happened to her because she was not taught. I'm sorry, I'm dragging you back. It's easy to, 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 to apportion blame to rubbish people. They are not, you, call, what are you doing? Are we sure if you go back to our houses, we are not guilty of the same thing? How many of us can stay in queues, the so called big men among us, can stay in queues for one or two hours? Many of us will not vote on that, they may, may not. And I'm urging them to find time to spend the whole day to, to queue and vote. It's not easy, it's not, it's not enough for us to... So, going back to Oshun, let me just see this opportunity. Let me just see this opportunity to all the good people of Oshun State to be prepared and make sure they vote, and not only vote, ensure that their votes count. And let all you and I prepare for 2019 to make sure that we participate actively in the electoral process. Okay, Thank quickly you. then, while we're talking about the voters' advocacy, calling on people to actually participate in politics, even while we're calling on government to give the people a reason to participate in politics because it's a one-on-one one, one thing. You understand? You have to give people a reason to participate and they would actually participate. There's still this new rancor in China, that's a new minimum wage review. And of course, we know that the minimum wage for workers for about eight years now has been 18,000 naira. And the NLC, the TUC, they have been clamoring for a particular increase. And recently, the labor leaders in Nigeria on Wednesday cautioned the federal government to stop foot dragging on the new minimum wage and allow the tripartite committee its job to avoid industrial crisis. The labor leaders who are members of the minimum wage committee at a joint news conference addressed in Lagos gave the federal government 14 days to ensure that the committee conclude its work or be ready to face industrial action. Yes, so they are clamoring that in the federal government does not look at the upward review of the minimum wage. They will go on the 14 days ultimatum strike. Even though the federal government has said that they would look into it next week, but still on the foot drag of minimum wage, how would you evaluate this particular situation, Ambrose? Well, I think labor unionism in Nigeria has become a joke. I mean, it has become a huge joke. I mean, it's so factionalized. I mean, the NU NLC, the TUC, um, there's no more vibrancy. There's a lot of psychophancy that have been bought over. Uh, nothing is happening. And then they make a few notes here and there. I mean, the last time, the last week, the Oshun State Governor said they were going to pay some Aviano salary and going so, so much. And the labor leader there was telling the people, was praising the governor. And then, a, a labor, you know, that cannot even ensure that the basic thing, the basic rights of your members have been received. We are talking about minimum, increase in minimum wage. The minimum, existing minimum wage, have been sure that have been paid. There are states that have been owned for, for 16 months, 18 months, 24 months, 10 months, 6 months. And if there, we have labor unions in this country, and none of, the, uh, none of those uh, uh, states, the secretaries have been uh, picketed. 
you have not shut down the government of a state like Oshun that is going so much, and other states like uh, Kogi State and so many other governors. There was bailout fund given out. What did the labor unions do to ensure that those bailouts were used for the salary as, as the Mr. President even begged the governors when he was releasing the structure of money to them? He begged them, please use it for salary. Some of, one of many of them didn't listen to him. That means another one, the Paris Fund, nothing. Yet, we have a labor union because the election is coming close. Probably they're looking for something to collect from the government because I don't know any, any uh, funding or any valid reason why this should come up now. The 18,000 minimum wage, the first thing the labor should ensure that all workers in this country that are working for the government should be paid their salaries. No worker should be owed an extra salary. You know how many people that have died because they have not been paid? That they should ensure that the pensioners are not being owed a, a dime. Let's forget this uh, normal uh, anthem they sing every day about the uh, increase in minimum wage. I think there's something behind this increase in minimum wage that is making them sing it. That is why they are making all this stuff always close to election. It is true that this government promised that they are going to increase the minimum wage. But in the reality, in the ground, that they are owing salaries, ensure that the salaries is, uh, are, are being paid. And then from there, when we have stability of conformity to timely payment of salary, then we can go forward. But for now, I think this labor uh, uh, unions should just concentrate on something more valid. Okay. And stop shadows. Emeka, let's hear from you the analysis on Yeah, this. for me, I'll just quickly say that there are other there are issues that need to be really looked into um, because of time. I'll just say one. We should talk about working out a living wage, not just a national minimum wage. And then two, do we need a national minimum wage? Must it be applied across all the states? Then three, we have this problem of political recruitment. When governors are leaving, they suddenly recruit thousands of people. And then you find out, for instance, like a state like Benue State, having, I think, the third highest wage bill in the country. And so, no matter the number of, you know, how many times you give them bail out funds, Paris Club funds, they cannot meet, they cannot deal with this, uh, with this huge weight bill. So I think this thing needs to become a national debate. It's not just about clamoring for so and so amount. Is it a living wage? Or is it a national minimum wage? Is it a living wage? There are other things I would have gone into, but, um, well, maybe we'll leave it for another day. Thank All you. Right, uh, Bob, let's hear from you, Benga, on this minimum wage yes, before maybe, we call it a day. Maybe one of the things he will have gone into is this issue of infrastructure. To me, I don't know why I'm not too... I, well, I was a unionist, I was even national vice president of NUJ, I uh, fought for media salary and what have you, and uh, we got some, actually, quietly. And even at the national level, as the federal civil servants, I was one allowance we fought for them that was paid and there wasn't much noise. My worry <laughs> is the politicization, is the, yes, is the yeah. noise about this minimum wage. Yes, That's my greatest fear. Because it, it, it was so obvious that it will cause inflation. Yes. I'm not against that is minimum, using minimum wage. That should but be part of the hype, debate. The yes. hype about it, yes. the way both government and even uh, the labor leaders make yes. so much noise, it's obvious that the very day you announce that I say, I don't know if you say 50 something or 60 something, everything should up. And what happens with the, old, the, the majority of Nigerians who are yeah, not privileged private, the private to work in the private sector? So that is just my own. Let government concentrate on the provision of certain basics so that our people will live well. And it's not all about Naira and Kobo. That's my take. All right, thank you very much. Well, that is where we draw the quotes for today's edition of Editors 4. We talked about the controversies surrounding Buhari's appointment. That's the finance minister, Deoshin, who resigned. And of course, we have a new finance minister, now acting finance minister, that's Zaina Baneb Ahmed, who was actually the minister of national budget and planning. She's now acting as the finance uh, minister and of course we talked about the ocean governorship elections we're hoping for the best for ocean state and of course minimum wage review we hope that of course workers will take priority and not just politicization of the issues there it's been a pleasure hanging out with Jamaica Marjanago and Brisibuke and of course Benga on Noiga thank, thank you, you very much for being on the thank show much, and to our distinguished much. audience thank you for being a part of editors forum and all those who made the show a success Thank you very much. I am Retail Modia. Do join us same time, same station for another edition of Editors Forum. Stay blessed.